have gone into the black hole that is Death's setup, iterations are almost a given, be it in the layout, peripherals, you name it. Speaking of peripherals, keyboard and mice are an essential part of any Death setup and over the years I've used different kinds from my classic Apple Logic keyboard to novelties like my Steampunk keyboard. So when Logitech reached out a couple of weeks back and offered to send me the MX Keys S combo, it was an absolute no-brainer and after two weeks of use, these are my thoughts. Buckle up and let's go for the ride. Getting into it, inside the box you get the MX Keys S, MX Master 3S, a wristrest, the Logibolt USB receiver and a USB A to C cable to help you charge it when it runs low on juice. In case you have trouble connecting them to your computer, the instructions are mapped out on the box, which if you'd ask me, was quite a smart move from Logitech as this reduces the waste which comes in the form of an instruction manual. Jumping on the design, having come from a keyboard with a 100% layout, I chose to remain in that ecosystem, the only difference being it's a membrane keyboard but with lots of cool features. Dulling down into the chassis, majority of it is made from aluminum which makes it look so premium and the plastic parts are all recycled. It's also got some heft even though majority of the chassis is quite slim with a slight elevation which is good for ergonomics. Speaking of ergonomics, it does come with a wrist rest which has been good to use although the only downside I'd say is the cushioning is quite thin. Going into detail, even though it's a membrane keyboard, its keys have got a slight travel which is quite satisfying and for those who are new to keyboards, there are mainly two types, membrane and mechanical keyboards. Membrane keyboards are characterized by having a soft layer of membrane underneath the keys and how they work is a circuit registers that pressure and sends a signal to your computer that the key has been pressed. On the other hand, mechanical keyboards have individual switches under each key that register your key press and it gets even more interesting with mechanical keyboards because there are several kinds, tactile, clicky and linear switches. If you'd like a deep dive into the worlds of mechanical keyboards, check out this video. Getting back to the MX Keys S, it's been an absolute joy to use over the past couple of weeks thanks to the different customization it offers. When it comes to connecting it to your computer, you could either connect it via Bluetooth or the Logibolt USB receiver. For Bluetooth connectivity on a Mac computer, pick the option you'd want, either 1, 2 or 3, then hold it down for a few seconds and once it starts blinking, go to settings, then Bluetooth and it should appear there. While its Bluetooth connectivity is quite reliable, my preference has always been the Logibolt receiver so that I don't experience any latency. Moving along, like mentioned earlier, since I was already used to a full-size keyboard, it was hard switching to something else. For those who don't know, keyboards do come in a variety of sizes that contain different numbers of keys and in the keyboard wall you'll hear percentages being used to refer to the size of the keyboard. In the case of this keyboard, it's got a 100% layout with 104 keys, which basically means it has all the essential keys plus a numeric keypad. In contrast, my Apple Magic keyboard has a 75% layout with 74 keys. Another thing to note is it's specifically designed for Mac but can also be customized for Windows. And while on the subject of keyboard layouts, you might as well touch on the actuation of the keys. I know some of you are already splitting your hairs, fear not, I'll fill you in. Actuation is basically how hard you press the key for the key press to be registered. In the case of this keyboard, it has an actuation force of about 180 grams and a bottom out force of the same amount, which is ideal for someone like me with normal typing habits. In case you forgot, bottoming out is when the keys are pushed all the way down. Another important aspect to talk about with regards to actuation would be travel, which basically refers to the distance the keys have to be pushed down before the key press is registered. Since this keyboard doesn't have switches, the key travel isn't as noticeable as that on a mechanical keyboard. Moving along, after using it the past few weeks, the features it comes with are by far the most exciting aspect of this keyboard. I've been able to switch between my devices with just a press of a button and the fact that I can now take a screenshot by just pressing one button saves me a lot of precious time whenever I'm working on my computer. The backlight is also an interesting feature that we've seen in most keyboards over the years but just be aware when you have it on, the battery drains a lot faster but more on the battery life in just a bit. Speaking of battery life, the MX Keys S is an absolute tank but there's a catch. With the backlight on, you'll only be able to use it for a max of 10 days before you recharge it, whereas with the backlight off, you can use it for up to 5 months. Over the past few weeks, I've put it through some serious marathons from long editing sessions to some simple gaming and it definitely shines above most keyboards. Moving further down, the keyboard comes with a resource made from memory foam. It adds the much needed ergonomics to the setup and being a person who's big on health and fitness, it was a no-brainer. Despite being soft and pleasant to touch, it doesn't slip or slide which is important as my hands move in all sorts of directions when I'm working. The only gripe I have with it is, it's a bit on the thinner side and once the wear and tear starts to kick in, it may not be as comfy. 
Now, as we all know, no keyboard setup is complete without a mouse, and the perfect fit for the MX Keys S would have to be Logitech's latest top of the line mouse, the MX Master 3 S. It's been around the block for a while now, and even though it still holds the same design language as the previous gen MX Master 3, it's got a few features that have been amazing to use. Besides the good ergonomics, great battery life, horizontal scroll wheel for productivity and video editing we've grown accustomed to through the previous gen versions, the 3S sticks out in the subtleties. We now have an increase in range of the sensor from 4000 in the MX Master 3 to 8000 dpi in the 3S, better tracking which can work on glass and clicks that are quieter than the previous gen 3S. It's not all roses and sunshine though, there are few quirks mostly due to the generational leap Logitech is making across the MX series. It's no longer compatible with the old unifying technology as we now have Logibolt which has advantages like reduced USB bandwidth and that helps a lot with latency. We also see the introduction of Logi Option Plus which is an upgrade from the old Logi Options. Speaking of Logi Options Plus, this is what takes the MX Keys S combo experience to the next level. Whilst it's not a necessity, its cutting edge technology and user centric design is a game changer for anyone seeking to enhance their digital experience with the Logitech devices. From customizing your keys to monitoring the battery life of your devices to changing settings like the backlight, brightness, you'll be in for a treat and it doesn't stop there. Beyond its personalization prowess, it fosters remarkable features to elevate productivity and creativity by enabling you seamlessly switch between devices, enjoy multi-device mastery, granting you a new level of fluidity. With the new smart actions, things got even better. With just one button, I can access multiple applications as soon as my Mac powers on, which is super convenient. Whether you're a professional seeking efficiency or a creative looking to amplify your artistic prowess, the Logi Options Plus makes that easy for you and interestingly enough, through regular updates that bring fresh functionalities, ensuring your devices are always up to speed. As for the price, the whole package would set you back around 320 Australian dollars, which is definitely on the premium budget end of the market, but in comparison to every item on its own, it's more cost effective. For perspective, the MX Keys S on its own would cost you about 230 Australian dollars, the MX Master 3 S would cost you 140 Australian dollars, and the wrist rest would cost you $40, bringing the total to 409. If you do the math, you save around 89 Australian dollars. In conclusion, I'd say in a world where efficiency meets elegance, the MX Keys S combo stands at the pinnacle of technological harmony. With each click of the keyboard and every swipe of the mouse, it transforms the mundane into the extraordinary. Its illuminated keys guide you through the darkest of creative nights, and the pinpoint precision of the mouse helps you glide effortlessly through the editing timelines, word documents, and web pages with so much ease. The seamless connectivity across devices breaks down barriers, making your desk one cohesive space with a consistent flow, thus ensuring you encounter fewer issues whilst working. But it's not just about function, it's about the fusion of craftsmanship and innovation, the slick design, the premium materials, and the attention to detail which envelops you in a sense of luxury and a reminder your workplace is not just a place, but a canvas for your aspirations. If you'd ask me, I'd highly recommend. Well, that sums up my review of the MX Keys S combo. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and click the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. To see my review of the rarest mechanical keyboard in the world, check out this video. Until then, people of the internet, I'm signing out. See you on the next one.